All right. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, boys and girls, ladies right. and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad everybody's joining <laughs> us tonight, Pastor Larry. We got a good crowd tonight. Amy. Yes. Good yes. to see everybody here. Yeah. I'm glad you guys are here and, and joining us on this nice Wednesday night, full moon tonight. We were just looking at that outside. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It looks like we're just, uh, finally starting to get some good weather out there, Pastor Larry. It's been kind of gray and ugly the last couple of days, but it's very. it was nice today. It was a nice day today. It was really, cold. Yeah, it was a little chilly. Yeah, normal kind of a, you know, we just got some things done around the house here. So I um, hope that you guys are having a blessed week and that you're getting a lot of things done and, um, uh, you know, just having a blessed week, man. We're looking forward to seeing you guys again. Uh, I'll just go ahead and say it now. But as you guys know, we're going to be back at church this Sunday at 10 a.m. Yes, Amen. Yes. Amen. That's when we start. So we're looking forward to going back and seeing you guys live and in color. Amen. So, uh, we'll be there, you know, Pastor Larry and I, we usually get there about nine o'clock. So, you know, we're going to be there and we're going to be doing our COVID, uh, guidelines like we've been doing, but we look forward to seeing you guys then. So yeah, it was a great day. And how was your day, Pastor Larry? It was good. It was really good. Got to, uh, do my work. I had to do some work and, uh, that's all I do is work now, but <laughs> my job work, is work, always work. changing. I was doing it on my phone for a while and then they mm. changed it on the to the computer so i had to do a bunch of stuff and then um, i don't think he'll mind saying this but i think no. pastor caleb is going to start working yeah with the same company i'm working with online so hey i'm recruiting people for anybody Sorry. looking for an online <laughs> job let me know they but, should uh, <laughs> they should be giving you some money for yeah, that they should be giving me up some money but yeah you know i just want to encourage everybody to come back sunday i know you know you probably are just like i don't know if i should go back i hear the lord saying come back come back, <laughs> come, back. come back you know hey if you want to come back and you're like man i'm gonna come back but i'm gonna wear my mask the whole service hey there nobody it needs to be feel pressured to take off their mask yeah. or anything like that come Let's let's worship together. I, 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 it, it, I'm I'm saddened that we had to stop, but I know we did it for health reasons. But I, I just saw so many people starting to come back to church and yeah. people were slowly making their way back. And, you know, we even heard uh, this week that somebody that hadn't came in a while was going to come back to church. Yeah. That Sunday that Jamie got sick and they were thinking about they were going to start making their way back already. So, you know, come, you know, let's just continue to practice the social distancing like we have been. You know, come, let's fellowship. I'm sure we'll have donuts mm -hmm. and uh, let's worship the Lord. Amen. I yes. believe God wants to move. I'll be speaking. Uh, God has given me a word that I've been wanting to share. So I want you to come and hear that. And uh, let's just worship and praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I'm I'm still very excited for this year, Pastor Larry and, and the church and stuff. You know, our church was prophesied to to grow and, and to be great, you know, and to just, you know, just to really speak into people's lives and things like that. So uh, we're still believing that. Amen. And standing on that word. So, uh, but we want to see you guys there too. Amen. Filling up that church and, uh, supporting us and just, uh, growing in your walk with the Lord as well. Yes. That's what it's all about. Amen. So yes, be sure to come this Sunday and, uh, continue to come and uh and just uh receive whatever god has for you amen amen i want to just i want to just encourage people I, I see people putting prayer requests i know audra put a prayer request at the beginning right away thank you audra i'm glad yeah. you got that in right away the quicker the better you guys so we can get to it by before we get to the end so if you have a prayer request you want to throw it in there now go ahead uh and we'll keep track of them and get to them at the end so, yes uh, and i hope everybody's continuing their reading uh, yeah. I'm on time. I'm not ahead. I know Brother Albert's ahead. <laughs> yeah. That's good. I'm not ahead. I wish I was ahead, but I'm right on time. I've been. I. It's like clockwork. I've been waking up, doing my reading, and then doing everything else. Yeah. But making sure I get it done early because mm -hmm. I forget. Yeah. <laughs> you know, once you do it, it really doesn't take that long. I mean, I know yeah. some people are uh, faster readers than other people, but I, I guess just the important thing is that when you're reading, you're, you're getting something out of it, you know, and you're not reading too fast to where you're not getting something out of it or, you know, too slow to where it's taking you all day or something like that. Just make sure you're getting something out of it, you know? Yeah. Uh, but why don't we go ahead and let's start with the hellos, Pastor Larry, because I know there's some people watching here. We got 13 people watching tonight. Amen. I see Annie and Anna are both watching. Amen. Good to see you. Yeah. Both. And there's Brother Edward. Edward. Eduardo, miss you, bro. We need to get together, man. I know, man. I know. Yeah, there's Edward. Uh, Albert. Albert is is watching. He just commented. He says, I'll start Galatians tomorrow. Come on, Come on Jesus. Start Dang. Galatians We're just barely tomorrow. in Romans. We're in so, Romans, boy. <laughs> starting tomorrow. <laughs> He's like Jesus. He leading the way. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. Okay, yeah, that's good, man. 
And then uh, Mary Escobar, of course, is watching. Glad you're here, Mary. Amen. And Gloria Martinez is watching. Yes, my grandma. My grandma. Good to see y'all. Amen. Y'all. Yes. Who else? Who else? I'm scrolling. Annie, of course. Annie, yeah. Audra. It was why you already mentioned Audra. Audra. Yeah. Robert Perez is watching. Hello, Robert. How are you, sir? And Marcus. Good to see Marcus Escobar. Marcus. Yeah. And Michael Bustamante. All and right. Michael Bustamante. Yes. Yeah, Amen. Well, that's all I can see on my end right here. I'm sure yes, there might be That's some all I can people. see on my end, too. So if you're watching, Mary Escobar, you say Mary Escobar, yes? Yes. Yes. So if you're watching and you want us to say hi to you, please uh, say hi in the comments. Amen. Yeah. Be sure as we're preaching, as we're fixing to start preaching, just be sure, of course, uh, to continue to like and uh, send those likes and those hearts coming as well to boost the video. And if you haven't already, please share it. So more people on your timeline can see it as well. Amen. We want more people to be touched by this word. So, yes, I think that's it. Pastor Larry, I, don't, I feel like there was something else I had to say, but, um, but that's it. We'll just go ahead and we'll begin. Let's pray before we get started. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just ask yes, you to open our hearts, Lord, open our minds tonight. God, let us feel your presence, Lord. Yes, and everybody that's watching, Lord, I pray, Father, that they would just uh, receive something receive something from the word that Pastor Larry and I are going to share tonight, God. I pray, Father, that their hearts would just be moldable and just be open, Lord. And, yes. um, you know, let us just have a great time in you tonight, Father. Let us leave learning something and feeling something tonight in the mighty name Jesus of name. Jesus. Yes. Amen. Yes. Well, tonight is uh, Bible study. And, you know, I don't know about you, Pastor Larry, but sometimes I like to... Uh, you know, sometimes I, I just like to preach on Wednesday, but sometimes I like to teach on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So I think tonight uh, what I kind of had in store for you guys is kind of like a mixture of both, like preaching and teaching, so to speak. So that's what we're going to do tonight. Amen. So, uh, you know, also, yeah, I can also say this. If you haven't, uh, you know, please subscribe to newcovenantway.com mm -hmm. because we actually, Pastor Larry and I do a lot of teaching on there. Like we release articles we're starting to come out like with some books and things like that. And, um, you know, we're going to get back into the, uh, the Facebook live feeds pretty soon as well, where we do teachings and all that as well, where it's just, we like to just stick to teaching on there, you know, just helping you yeah. learn your Bible guys, because when you learn your Bible, it's not just about head knowledge or anything like that. It's not just being about smart in the Bible, but I believe Pastor Larry, when you learn your Bible, you you grow in your relationship with God. Amen. You feel closer to God. It's about building that relationship with them. And I think when you learn your Bible, truly learn what it means, who God is, who you are in God, it helps you in your relationship with God. So that's why teaching is important. That's why learning your Bible is important. Amen. Amen. So subscribe to that. And uh, we'll talk more about that later. But like I said, tonight's going to be kind of uh, preaching and teaching. But um, yeah, I still see there's some prayer requests coming in. We're going to pray for Sister Emma as well. Amen. Yes. I hope they're doing good over there. I haven't seen them in a long time. Yes. Amen. Yeah, we got a haircut, Sister Mary. Yeah, yeah, we're all spiffy now. <laughs> we had, we had we to get, needed it, We man. had to get the, we were looking Pentecostals. I know, right? You know, we had that long hair. We had that glory coming oh, down. Oh, that glory coming down. <laughs> we had to get it. You know, it's funny because even when I was getting my haircut yesterday, Jamie, we're not allowed uh, to go in together because they're only allowing people to go in that are going to get the haircut. So you have to wait in the car mm -hmm. in order. And then when they ready for you, they'll come out and get you. Mm -hmm. So I took advantage of that time while Jamie was inside getting his haircut. I was on my phone and doing my reading. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying all that, Pastor Jamie, because it's so important for you to look for every opportunity that you can yes. to read. You know, you may not be able to read, sit down and, and read it all morning. But if you look for those little time, maybe you're waiting to pick up your your kids at school or something. Mm -hmm. and you can grab that Sit phone and get it. that reading done. Mm -hmm. Amen. So yeah. I wanted to say that. Yeah, that's good because I brought my Bible too yesterday. And when he was getting his haircut, I was in the car uh, reading mine as well. So that helped me get caught up. I don't, and uh, I know I said this before, but uh, I'll say it again. One of the things that helps me is breaking it up a little bit, like because I'm a busy guy too, you know. And sometimes I might just read like one chapter in the morning and then later on in the afternoon, I'll read the rest. But it's like it, that makes a whole lot of difference because it's like when you get to it and later in the afternoon, it's like, well, now I, I don't have to read that one chapter. You know, I don't have to read those two chapters. I already did it. So I just have a little bit now, you know, so Absolutely. that helps too. you know, you break it up and try not to fall behind because if you do, it's going to be harder to catch back up. But that's OK. If you do, you can always catch up later. Amen. Yeah. All right. I'd rather fall behind than just give up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, don't give up. That's the important thing. Mm -hmm. You don't have to stick exactly to that calendar. It's just more of yeah, like a guide, you, you know. So um, even if you're still reading in March or April, 
or even if it's the rest of the year, if you just want to read a chapter a day, you know, do it, do that, you know, if you want to. So don't feel bad if you're left behind. Amen. So uh, just catch back up later. That's why, hey, we don't, we don't have to read on the weekends too. So if you want to, you can catch up Sunday after church or Saturday morning before everybody wakes up or mm-hmm. just try to be creative with it, you know, and just don't try to stick so much to the plan, you know. All right. Anyways, uh, uh, why don't you guys turn to Ephesians chapter four with me real quick? We're going to read Ephesians chapter four, verse 11. So uh, what I'm going to talk to you guys about tonight, I'm going to give you the title first. And when I give you the title, you're probably going to start laughing. But uh, I, I'm going I'm to explain. So what I wanted to call this message was choosing a church or how to choose a church or something like that. What, what to look for when you're choosing a church. You covered in church. Let's covered pray. Church. This is over. Yeah. Father, and then we're done. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Like what I was thinking about, I'm like, I don't know if it's a good idea to call it that because they're going to be like, I already go to your church. I, I understand that. But maybe like this video can be for somebody else, you know, who's going to yes. watch it later. Or what, what I'm really hoping that this message will do is help you to talk to somebody else out there about maybe people who don't go to church or something, Pastor Larry. I mean, think about it. How many people that we encounter every day in our life, coworkers, friends, you know, family, people who really don't have a home church to go right. to, or they do have a church, but you might know in your spirit, or you might feel in your spirit that like, they're not where they should be. You know, I've talked mm-hmm. to a lot of people like Brother Edward and stuff like that. Uh, he's watching, you know, and we, we, we've talked about people and we're like, you know, they need to come home, you know, they need to come visit our church or something like that. And it's not that our church, uh, I'm already getting ahead of myself, but it's not that our church is like the best church or anything like that. There's a lot of churches here in our town, of course, all over the country that I believe have a lot of things they can offer people. And, you know, we try, we want to work together and I'm for them. I'm praying for them. I support them, you know, all these different churches, you know, so it's not, this isn't a message like why you should pick our church. It's what to look for when you're looking for a church. And so what you can do is you can take what I'm going to teach, what we're going to teach you tonight and say, okay, present this to those people that don't have a home church and say, Hey, this is what you should look for when you're choosing a church. Okay. And then of course, I wouldn't have a problem if you threw in there, you should come visit our church, right? Because we're new coming at church. We welcome everybody, right? That's mm-hmm. fine too. But this is more of just like what you should look for, what anybody should look for when you're choosing a church. Amen. Do y'all understand? Amen. Amen. All right. So let's, let's just read it first, Pastor Larry. Ephesians chapter four, and uh, let's just start at verse 11. Let me bring it up here. Can we read it? I'll read it. Yeah, go ahead, there. Pastor Larry. We're going to read to uh, verse 16. Verse 11 through 16. 11 through 16. Mm-hmm. It says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers mm-hmm. for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Okay, stop right there, Pastor Larry. So we we all know this is a very popular scripture, right? We all know the first part that talks about apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, okay? It's called the fivefold ministry, right? And we know it says in verse 12 exactly why God has given these types of offices in the church. And he says he's given these people to the church, for the equipping of the saints, for the equipping of the saints and for the work of the ministry. Amen. And then he says, for the edifying of the body of, uh, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Okay. We'll, we'll come back to that, but but, sorry, Pastor Larry, you can keep reading verse 14. It says that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of man in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. You see, that's that's where it's at right there, Pastor Larry. The reason why God wants us to be edified, why he wants us to be equipped, and why he wants us to be built up in the Lord is so that whenever these doctrines come, we're not going to be tossed back and forth, not knowing what to believe, where to go, what type of church to look for, who to talk to. 
And a lot of that is going on right now. Like uh, we last Wednesday, I talked about the prophecy with the election and stuff like that. Yeah. What is that, Pastor Larry? People are literally being tossed to and from in one, like going from prophet to prophet, if you will, scripture to scripture, not really knowing what to make of all this mess that's going on right now. But why is that? It's, be- it's because the church is not being built up. It's because they're not being edified. It's because they're not being equipped with the work of the ministry. Okay. I'm just throwing little nuggets out there. (laughs) Okay, verse uh, 15. It says, But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things unto him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. So really self-explanatory scripture right there, right? So God has given us these things because he wants the church to be built up, edified. I already said all that. So let me just give you, this might be kind of quick, but I'm going to begin by giving you just two plain things that we can see from that scripture that God, that the reason why God has given these ministries, and I believe is also for the purpose of the church as well. The reason why is because, number one, God wants us to be equipped, and then God wants us to be built up. Man. So I like I, I, I feel like sometimes we skip this part in the scripture, Pastor Larry, where it says that he wants to equip the people in the church in order to be built up and ready for the work of the ministry, for the work of the ministry. In other words, my job and Pastor Larry's job is to teach you guys and to help you be built up for the work of of the ministry. It's because like, it's like we always say, Pastor Larry, you, if you're watching right now, you are a minister. You're a minister. That means you have a message and a gospel to preach. It doesn't mean that you're supposed to have a microphone or it doesn't mean that you're supposed to be a prophet or that you're supposed to be an apostle or, you know, some have some big ministry, but you are a minister. That means that you minister to people. You minister to your coworkers. You minister to the people that you talk to every day. What does that mean? You, we all have the responsibility to bring the gospel of peace to people out there. And so when you come to church, our job is to make you ready for that, to make you ready to go out there, to make you like, you know, like, like, like you already are ministers, but just to remind you that you're, a, that you are a minister and that your job is to go out there and to preach the gospel to people, to get them saved. So we need to stop. Let me just start by saying this. We need to stop thinking that our job as Christians is just to come to church just to be fed. That's right. Just to sit on the pew and just to warm the pew. We need to stop thinking that church is just something that we do on Sundays. We need to stop making church just culture, a part of a part of who we are or right. what we do. You know, we go, we sing a few songs, you know, we we have fun on Sunday mornings and then we go home and that's it. Like church is just something we do. We need to stop making it like that. And we need to start looking at church as a place to go to be equipped because right. you have a mission to do on Sunday after church, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You know, I said this before in one of my videos, Pastor Larry, and um, <laughs> you can tell me what you think about this if you want or whatever else. But I said one time before that, you know, we often call the church a, uh, a hospital for the hurting, which it is, you know, we want people who are hurt, you know, to come and be ministered to, you might have a broken heart or you might be going through financial issues or you might be ha- really like going through a sickness or some type of pain. And we want those people that are hurting to come right and be healed from the great physician. Amen. Right. But really, if you really read the Bible and you read scriptures like this, the church is more like a Home Depot where you're supposed to go in order to get things in order to build your house, in order That's to right. build yourself up so that when those trials do come, you won't be hurt so much. You understand? So I said that in one of my videos, like I think that the church is more of like a Home Depot, a place where you're supposed to be built up. You're supposed to be equipped. You know, it's 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 not a place really. I mean, it's really not a place to come and and have a good time and and be babied, although we do have fun at church, right? Church is a great place to be, but it's primarily when you come, you should be thinking, okay, I'm going to church this Sunday because I'm going to be equipped to go out there and do the ministry of God after this. I'm not coming just to have a good service. I'm not coming just to get hyped up. I'm not coming just to, to sing and just to worship. I'm coming to be equipped so that when I leave here, I leave as a different person 
And for the purpose of That's ministering right. to other people, Come because we, we, we have to stop thinking about ourselves thinking, Hey, I need a good message today. I need to be encouraged today. And you know, maybe we need to start thinking I need to be equipped so I can go out there and help other people who are suffering as well. Cause let me tell you something, man, the, the greatest, the greatest type of cure that you can give yourself when you're feeling low or when you're feeling depressed or when you need encouragement, the greatest type of cure you can give yourself is to go out there and, and uh, encourage somebody else. That's right. Because when you encourage somebody else, it encourages you. When you bless somebody else, it blesses you. I don't know about you guys, but whenever I like buy somebody lunch or, or help somebody, you know, with money or, you know, do something nice for somebody, it makes me feel good. It blesses me, even though I'm the one who's really blessing them, you know? So that's, that's what we have to start thinking about church when we come, that we need, we're going out there to minister and to be equipped in church and to minister to other people. Now, I'll be quiet for a minute, Pastor Larry. I'll let you add on to that if you want to add anything. <laughs> no, I, I just want to say I think it's so true what you said that the church, you know, a lot of people, they look at the pastor and they say, well, the pastor does the work of the ministry. You know, what do you do, Pastor Larry? Well, you work in the ministry. You know, what do you do, Pastor Jamie? Well, you work in the ministry. Well, technically, I don't work in the ministry. You work in the Amen. ministry. Yeah. My job is to prepare you for the work of the ministry because I was one day at one time where you were at sitting in the pew listening. Right. You know, and, and I mean, I, I know I say this a lot and I've been saying it since they've been coming, but it's so true. You know, Lori and Jacob really played a big role in our lives and mm -hmm. our beginning years of our relationship with the Lord. Y'all don't, you know, Lori and Jacob being there at our, at our church is a blessing because they were a big part of our lives and helping us to develop what what we are now you know yes. that they they allowed us Amen. to speak you know and, and they've always encouraged us and they've always said hey you know you you can do this better or you know have you ever thought about saying it like this right. or doing it like that and they helped us to get to where we're at now mm -hmm. you know and, and 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 it's because we were able to receive and and we were able to go to them and, and to right. other ministers or to our pastor and be able to say hey you know what I don't only just want to come to church, but I want to be involved in the church. Right, right. I want to help and that's I want it. to encourage uh, other people, you know, Amen. so I think that that's important. I want to say one other thing, Pastor yeah. Jamie. I'm just going to give a small version, go but ahead, not the ahead. big version. But I, I just wanted to say, you know, Pastor Jamie was talking about being equipped so you can help other people. You know, during this quarantine, and you don't know what I'm talking about, but during this quarantine, of course, you know, I, I, I had to find something to do. So I started playing my games. <laughs> And I, I, I was playing online mm -hmm. the game, and, and uh, so I'm not, I've never really done that because I've never really, you know, games, when I started playing games, they, they didn't have no online voice <laughs> yeah, right. or talking to people online. But nope. um, I wanted to say this, you guys, is that I was on there and throughout this quarantine. I haven't even said this at all. I was going to share it Sunday, but I'll say it now. But I was on there, and I was just hanging around with a bunch of guys on there, like, and you know, when you're on the voice thing, you don't know their names. You only know them by their screen name right. or if they tell you their real name. And the funny thing is, is that in the middle of that conversation, like they didn't know I'm a pastor. They don't even know I'm a pastor till this very day. Yeah. But when I went on there, it's like God set it up because the conversation started turning towards the Bible. And I was really trying to be quiet, Yeah, you know, we to but I wasn't much. trying to talk about God because I didn't want them to, to I really didn't want to share my personal life because you don't even know who these people are. Yeah, right. But I just started talking to them about the Lord, about the Lord and and uh, about God because they started asking questions. Yeah. And so I just kind of shared my thoughts. And one of the guys on there said, wow, he's like, you, you really know a lot about the Bible. And all I said to him was like, yeah, you know, I've studied it. I've read it, you know, and I and, I, and it's something that I've. That's a, that's part of my life. And I dropped it like that. And this week, Pastor Jamie, there's a young there's a girl on there who hangs who hangs out with us every time we're on the game. She gets on there. Yeah. And she went to the ER because she had an asthma attack. Yeah. And you guys, do you, do you know who she, who she messaged on the game? She, she messaged me mm. and she said, will you please pray for me? And she don't know I'm a pastor. She just. She just remembers that conversation that we had about the Bible, and that was it. Yeah. But I'm saying all that just to wow. say is that you do ministry outside the church. Yes. And, right. and that's what I love is right. because, yes, when I got saved, I wanted everybody to know about the Lord. Right. And I'm still like that to this very day. Everybody I encounter, 
I want them to know about the Lord because to me, I don't want to just be a peer warmer. I want to be somebody who is actively building God's people, building the church because we're called to be about the work of the ministry. Amen. Yeah, that's that's so good, Pastor Larry. That's the whole purpose. When, When Jesus died, man, he gave us what? The great commission, right? The great commission was to go out there and preach and make disciples of people, not go out there and praise dance, not go out there and and just have good sermons and and lift each other up, but make disciples of people, you know, and minister to people, help people, you know, because ministering to people, that's, that's what's going to draw them, you know, not, not hitting them overhead with the Bible. Like what you said, Pastor Larry, you didn't do any of that. You know, they, like you said, they didn't even know that you were a pastor or anything like that. You didn't come to them throwing scriptures at them and, and, you know, talking to them about God. But look, at the end of the day, that person turned to you, because she felt that you could minister to her, you know, so yeah, she, she yeah. saw that in you. At least that's what I got from what you right, were saying, yeah. you know, so that's, that's so good. That's the way we need to be as well. Again, I'm going to say it again, and then I'm going to move on. We, we shouldn't look at church as just a place to go, and it, it kind of sounds bad when I say it, but it's not just a place to go and, and feel good and do something, you know, on our Sunday mornings, you know. I honestly believe that there are some people who are bored, and that's the reason why they come to church, Pastor Larry, on Sundays, because they're bored. They got anything else to do. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? It, that's not the reason to do it. It's a serious thing. Of course, we're going to have a good time. We're going to laugh. We're going to have fun at church because I believe the Lord has a sense of humor. He wants us to have fun. He wants us to be joyful. It should be the most happiest place in the world. I'm not saying that it shouldn't be, but I'm saying that we also need to look at it as a serious thing, you know, and, and not just like a routine thing, a habit thing. I mean, come on, man. Y'all know that there are there are places and there are churches out there that that church to them is just a habit, something, a ritual that they do every Sunday for a particular reason. And, you know, our church definitely shouldn't be like that. And if you're looking for a church out there, you need to be looking for a church that doesn't operate like that as well. Like when you go, it just doesn't feel like you're doing something every Sunday just to pass the time or, you know, it's just to feel good or it's just to make me to minister to me. You need to be looking for a church. That's why I said those two things. When you look for a church, one of the things you need to look for is some, a church that you will feel equipped and that you'll feel built up with. So I I should probably talk, let me talk about that word for just a second. You know, some of the scriptures, uh, I don't even remember if it said edification, that the church is there for edification. If it doesn't, some translations say that. It says that that he gave these these offices for the edification of the church. Some translations say built up because that's all edification means. It just means the building up. So when you see edified or to edify or edification in your Bible, it just means to be built up. So I think uh, was it when I think we talked about this. Yeah. On the last service we preached, you know, Pastor Larry was talking about the foundation and then the walls, and then the roof, and then all these things have to be built up, right? We, we have to be edified as the body of Christ. So you shouldn't just be a foundation. You know, you have Christ the foundation, which we talked about on the last service, which is the most important part. But once you have that foundation, you need to begin building up, building yourself up. How do you do that? By going to a church or, or being a part of a church. One, this is one way, being a part of a church that will build you up in the word and, and things like that. Amen. So uh, actually, let me go. Let me show you a little more, a little bit more about edification. Look at first Corinthians chapter uh, 14. Pastor Larry. First Corinthians chapter 14. And we're going to look at verse uh, 26. And uh, I'll let you read it, Pastor Larry, if you want to read it. 1426. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 26. Okay. Tell me when you want me to read it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. 1426. 26. Mm-hmm. It says, How is it then, brethren, when every, whenever you come together, each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation? Let all things be done for edification. Edification, for build, for building up. Right. And I love what he says right there. I've always loved that scripture. He says, let, when you come together, let all things be done for the building up. The building up of the saints, for you, for, to, for you to be built up. In other words, he says, I like what he lists right here too. He says, every, when he's, he's talking to the, uh, the, the Corinthian church here. And he's telling them, he's saying the Corinthians are coming together, Pastor Larry, the, the, the Corinthians apparently were coming together. 
and there wasn't a lot of order in the Corinthian church. There was a lot of, they, were, they, had a, they boasted because they had a lot of gifts of the Spirit, so there was a lot of prophecy going on. There was, the, their services, when they got together, really weren't that organized. And if you keep reading chapter 14 in, in this area of 1 Corinthians, Paul says it. He says, you guys got to start doing things in order. Everything's got to be done in order. And then he says right here in verse 26, he says, when you come together, everybody has a psalm. You know what that means? Everybody wants to sing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Everybody has a song that they want to sing in the service. And then he says, a teaching. Everybody wants to teach something that they heard. Everybody has a tongue, you know, speaking in tongues. Everybody has a, a revelation, you know. Uh, everybody has an interpretation for that revelation. And, and then he's saying, when you guys come together, everybody wants to do this. He says, but at the end of the day, you know what? Everything has to be done for the sole purpose of building the person up. So what that tells me is that whenever we come to church and we sing, for example, we shouldn't be singing just to sing. We right. shouldn't be singing just to sing a pretty song and just to make people cry. We shouldn't be singing just for the heck of it, you know, because it sounds beautiful. Even hymns, it says right here, even psalms mm -hmm. has to be done for the building up of the saints. Right. Tongues has to be for the building up. You know, if you're going to share a revelation in church, it has to be done for the building up of the saints in Christ. And so, you know, when I look around today, man, I see, I see a lot of churches, man, that are just getting together and they're, they're doing their, Pastor Larry and I have talked about this before. And it's like, you know, when you sing, you know, worship is a big part of a church service, right? When you sing, it shouldn't just be like, an, an audition. It shouldn't just be talent. You know, a, a lot of people, Pastor Larry, I think, you know, personally that there are people that sing, you know, at church on Sundays, but it's more just about the talent. You know, how can I hit that octave? You know, can I, right, can yeah, I hit yeah. that octave? Can I play the piano beautifully? You know, you really don't feel a lot of anointing coming out of it. If I could put it like yeah. that, it's more just about they're talented, talent. but they're not anointed. Exactly. Yeah. Pastor Larry can talk a lot about that. They're talented. You know, they, they can play the piano, man. They can sing, you know, they can sing in harmony, but is there an anointing there? Is there a, when do people leave after that song? Are they being built up? Because the scripture says right here that we're supposed to be singing in order to edify the body. He says, do everything for the edification. Do everything in your church services for the edification. Revelations, you know, I mean, if you look around too, heck, there's probably churches that, you know, you walk in there, man, and they're just like speaking uh, there, everybody's sharing a revelation, you know, a dream they had last night or something that the Lord showed them. Okay, that's great. But when everybody leaves, are they learning anything? When everybody leaves, do they feel like they have substance, like they have something that, it, that they can carry out there into the world that's going to help them minister to somebody else? Yeah. Yeah. Or are they simply coming together to just spew all their revelations and their visions just to feel spooky and spiritual on Sunday morning and then go home? And then next Sunday, come back and do it again. No, if you're going to have a revelation, it needs to be done to build up the body of Christ. And so what are you trying to say, Pastor Larry? I'm trying to say that, again, when we come to church, we need to be looking for these things. You need to be looking for these things in church because I know, uh, you know, that there, there are many reasons why people attend churches today. You know, when you ask somebody, some of those reasons, Pastor Larry, um, uh, you know what, I'll let you, well, let me, I can think of some reasons, like maybe like some people like to go to church because they have a nice children's program or they like to come to church. I actually heard somebody say one time that they love going to their church because they're out of there in 30 minutes. <laughs> it's like, oh, man, me. I'm out in 30 minutes. And it's like, we're breaking into the song service. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> they're like, yeah, he had, if I can remember right, he was saying something. He's like, yeah, I like my church, man. You should go. We're out of there in 30 minutes. I'm like, well, just don't even go then. <laughs> if your goal is to save time, you know, then just don't go, you know. But what do you think, Pastor Larry? Do, can you think of any other reasons why people go to church today or what drives I, people I, to I, go? I think a lot of people pick churches today based upon preference, personal preference. Yeah. You know, I like the music. Mm -hmm. uh, I really felt welcome. You know, um, you know, I, I, I loved what the preacher said yeah. or I liked I liked what he, I like what he said. It spoke to me. And I think they don't ever think about all of these things that we're talking about. You right. Know, does it does it have an anointing? Does it right. does it edify the people? You know, and I think that that's something that we always have to remember is that everything has to be in decency and in order. Yes. You know, any, anything that you do has to have order to it. You know, yeah. Pastor Jamie, 
Pastor Jamie, y'all know you're a witness, and you can testify to this, because I, I want the, the people that go to our church to hear what I'm going to say. You know, there's uh, everybody knows that, I, that I'm the one that does all the music at church. I put the songs, you know, that we're going to do for that service or whatever. Yeah. And there's been times where I've had more songs back there, but I just tell them that we're done, mm. that we stop. Now, the people that are worshiping with me don't know that. They think we've done all the songs that I picked. Yeah. But I, we didn't. We may have skipped two songs. And the reason why I did that is because I didn't feel the anointing anymore. Mm, right. I right. felt that the Holy Spirit has already moved on. And and you have to be sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is doing. If there's a, yes. if, if if the Holy Spirit is not flowing in that direction, then you need to learn to move to the next area or to the next thing that God is doing. Right, right. And I've been in church, Pastor Jamie, where like and I'm I'm sure some of the like the older saints can testify. Yeah to this but there used to be times in the older churches where they used to have testimony service mm, yeah. and like after the song service they would let people come to right. the front and give a testimony right. and i've been in testimony services where the testimonies were longer than the preaching <laughs> yeah right you yeah. know every, i mean the <laughs> grand the, the, the little old lady would give a 45 minute testimony <laughs> right. and the pastor wouldn't even go up there and tell her that's enough yeah right you know like she's gone too long yeah, yeah. and 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 people would say well why would you stop her if if, if she's giving her testimony about the Lord because you have to ask yourself, is it edifying the church? Yes. Right. Or is you know, it killing be, the service? Yeah. <laughs> she, she may be, she may be going 45 minutes with her testimony, yeah. but is it edifying the people or is she putting everybody to sleep? Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes That's we good. feel we, we don't realize that sometimes we can do things in church and if it's not edifying the people, then it doesn't need to be done. Right. <laughs> if it's not blessing the people, then it doesn't need to be done. If it's not what God wants at that time, right. then we need to learn to release it uh, uh, to the Lord. Right, right. And I think that that's something that we all have to think about, you know, and, and, and as a pastor, I'm, I'm guilty of that. Yeah. You know, I'm guilty of going too long, mm -hmm. not, you know, or, or, or having stopped something when I should have kept going. We're all learning. We're right. all growing. Right. But at the point at the end of the day is that when you go to church, it, there needs to be edification. And I want to say this, Pastor mm -hmm. Jamie, and I'm going to shut up. Sometimes edification requires tearing down something. Mm -hmm. Sometimes edification involves rebuke. Yes. Sometimes edification involves correction. Yeah. And I think that sometimes we don't That's realize good. that because before you can ever put up a good solid wall in your home, you might have to tear out the old right. wall that you have there. Right. And sometimes you may need to be rebuked and you may yeah. need be you may need to be corrected and you may say, Well, that's not edifying me. That is not helping me. No, it is helping you. Hmm. Because the pastor or the sister or the brother that's correcting you, you may not like it at the moment, but at the end of the day, it's going to edify you and it's going to build you up as long yeah. as they continue to speak life to you and say, hey, you shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing that. Right. You don't need to be preaching that long. You don't need to be singing that right, song right. or whatever. You need to be doing this. And as long as you receive it, it's going to edify you and help you to grow in your anointing and in your walk with the Lord. Yeah. That's why when Lori and Jacob, when, when they first met me, man, I preached hellfire. Yeah. You know, and then Brother Jacob. <laughs> said you can't preach like that all the time yeah you know you you gotta learn to not be be always uh preaching people to hell you know you have to think about is this yes. gonna bless the people is it gonna edify the people right i didn't like it at the moment but i thank god that i received it because it's helped me grow in my relationship yeah right yeah that's that's good pastor Larry. i've i've learned that too you know like hey there's times where where i'm preaching to you guys and i can tell everybody's starting to tune out a little bit so yeah. you know you got to learn to just kind of yeah, you know, yeah, you keep going when the anointing's there and, and, you know, but at the same time, it's like you can't be a kind of person. I'm learning this too, Pastor Larry. You know, you can't be a kind of person that just it just it blows and goes and goes and the people just aren't even receiving anymore as well, you know, but we're not the only ones that face that. You know, other people face that as well, but I know when Pastor Larry picks the, uh, the worship songs like you were mentioning, I know he does a good job of that, you know, because the songs are really anointed and I can tell when he picks the songs that we're going to sing for Sunday, it's like, it's like Pastor Larry, you have a purpose to them when you lay them out, you know, like, oh, yeah, and so it's sure. like you're doing that because even in the songs, we want to build the people up, you know, we want to take them somewhere. And I think that's awesome, you know, Pastor Larry, but, yeah. uh, uh, I just, I lost my train of thought, but, uh, let me just tell you guys, uh, well, go to second Timothy chapter four real quick, and then I'm gonna keep talking for a minute. But, uh, I wanted to mention something else too, as you're turning there, second Timothy chapter four, uh, one thing that a lot of people look for uh, that I feel, one thing 
people look for when they're going to a church is they look for somebody that is that preaches really good. So which is why there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of famous preachers and things like that. And, you know, hey, that's awesome. You know, God is using them. Uh, but the service and building up is more than just good preaching. You know, I feel I feel like sometimes we kind of cling to people just because they can talk good, you know, just because they're good public speakers. But, you know, is there anointing there as well? You know, you always got to look for that as well. I don't know if you guys ever felt something like that, too, because I've known people that they can talk, man. You know, they can they can talk and talk. And sometimes what they say is good. But at the same time, it's like there has to be a building up behind what they're saying. There has to be a purpose to what they're saying as well. You know, so don't just look for good preaching, you know, don't just look for programs and things like that. Look for the anointing. Look for an edification in the church that you're going to. All right, so uh, I wrote this down. I'm going to give you guys a quote, okay, that I heard, and I'm going to just say it because it's too good. I didn't want to leave it out. Biblical Christianity is unpopular. Biblical Christianity is unpopular, and popular Christianity is unbiblical. <laughs> Mm, so I'm gonna true, say that again. So true. Biblical Christianity is unpopular, but popular Christianity is unbiblical. Okay, so we want to make sure that the the, the Christianity that, that we're going after, the churches that we're seeking, it might not be that popular. Okay, but it's biblical. It's biblical. You know, I I think that you know if you look at Jesus, you know, I mean, Jesus. He, he, he did things that might have rubbed people the wrong way at times. But like you said, Pastor Larry, it was correction and it, it was for the purpose of building people up. You know, sometimes he made people mad. Sometimes people wanted to stone him. You know, he really wasn't, I mean, he was popular, but he wasn't like the most sought after person. There were more people that wanted to kill him than that followed after him, you know. So not everything you do, in other words, is going to be popular and is going to be popular and just so uh, attractive, you know, to everybody. You know, it might be unpopular at times. So, you know, you got to look for a church like that, too. And I say that because a lot of people, I feel that they flock, you know, to popularity, like when it comes to churches. But you know what, man? A lot of the times you're going to find your edification you're going to find yourself, you're going to find your true relationship with God in small churches, small churches that, you know, hey, they don't have the numbers, they don't have the fog machines, they don't have the lights, they don't have all that, but they have God, and that's all that matters. They have the Amen. anointing there. They have the, you leave that church on Sundays, and you feel built up. You feel like you learned something, but you feel like you've been equipped to go out there and minister and to face the day. And, you know, you might not get that at a big, giant, popular church that everybody loves to go to, okay? So, again, don't just look for the numbers. Don't just look for popularity. Don't just look for what everybody is seeking after. Because even, we've had even um, popular preachers tell us, like, pop, actual popular preachers that have come and preach for us, they said, they've told us, they said that they have more support from small, little bitty churches of 10 or 20 people than they do from the big giant churches. <laughs> Absolutely. Even like with financial things, like when they go to these churches and, hey, you know, we want to take care of the, the preachers that come and preach from across the nation or something like that. You know, I want to be a financial blessing to them, to them, you know. And, you know, they've told us, they said, you know, we, we go to these big churches, these big popular churches, and they'll they'll get up there and they'll say, let's take up an offering for this person here. They'll take up a big giant offering and they'll give them, they'll give that person a little piece of it and keep the rest. <laughs> yeah. And they said that when they come to small churches like ours, we we you guys, man, you guys and Pastor Larry and I, we give like from our hearts and the offering is bigger than we give them than what they would get at a popular church. And that's insane. But why is it like that? Because popular churches is not always biblical. But biblical churches might not always be popular. Y'all understand yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. Absolutely. Uh, what did I say? Second Timothy chapter four. Let's read this one, and then we're almost we're almost going to a close. Second Timothy chapter four, verse one. Let me get there. Let's see. Second Timothy chapter four, verse one. Let's see. And um, I'll read this one, Pastor Larry. This is the last one. Okay. Second okay, Timothy chapter four. It says, "I charge you, therefore." Before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. And this is his charge right here in verse 2. He says, preach the word. 
be ready in season and out of season. And then this goes back to what you said, Pastor Larry, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Yeah. And then he says this for the time. Why, why should we do that? Why should we rebuke? Why should we exhort? Why should we preach and be ready in season and out of season? Because in verse three, he says, because the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they'll heap up for themselves teachers. So they'll take in teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and they'll be turned aside to fables. And we'll just stop right there. Mm -hmm. So what, what is he saying right here? Like what I'm getting from what he's saying is that there, a time is going to come when people aren't going to be interested in the truth anymore. They're just going to want to hear what makes them feel good. Yeah. They're just going to, they're going to listen to teachers, so-called teachers and preachers and people of God, which might have good intentions, which might be used by God in some way or another. I'm not saying any of these people are not used by God, but he says people, people that might want to go and find people like this in order to feel good. That's the reason why they listen to these people, and that's why they do what they do, and that's what drives them to that church or to this person because they want to feel good. He says it right here. They're, they're going to have itching ears, meaning they're going to want people to tell them things that they want to hear. That's right. And that is a scary thing. You know, it's, it's not good to only hear in life what you want to hear. Because you need people in life that are going to tell you what you don't want to hear in order, what he says, in order to build you up, to exhort you, to rebuke you at times, to reproof you at times so that you can come out as gold and be a better person on the other side. So, and he's saying, what does he, uh, what does Paul say? He says, preach the word and teach with, with doc, with sound doctrine, because the time is going to come when people aren't going to want to listen to those things. So in other words, th what I'm getting from it is this, don't be a kind of person that just looks for a church that makes you feel good. Again, that has those good programs that has that good stuff that has that nice air conditioner that had, that's dark on the inside. Somebody, somebody, uh, told me one time they, uh, I was not arguing with somebody, but we were debating about something online. And he said, I bet your church has a coffee shop in it and it's yeah. dark and a fog machine and all that. Are you one of those feel good churches? <laughs> I'm like, we man, I love, wish we had a we coffee, would love shop. A coffee shop. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we had the fog lights. I'd be taking it and blowing in everybody's face. <laughs> I wish we had the dark lights and all that, but we ain't got none of that. I didn't tell him that though. I was like, just whatever you want to think, man. But you know what? Don't be a kind of person that just looks for that stuff. Looks for you, you, when you go to a church, you, the only way you're going to grow in your relationship with God, which is the most important thing. The only way you're going to grow is if you find a church or, you know, I, I believe that everybody needs to go to church. That's what we're talking about right now is if you find a place to go to that when you leave, you feel like you've been built up and you feel like you've been edified. So I'm going to give you just uh, to end it here. I'm going to give you four questions, OK, that you can ask yourself or that you can give to these people that you talk to. Uh, you know, when they you, again, when you talk to those people that might not have a church, Pastor Larry, or that might not really know where they want to go. This is something you, you can tell them to ask themselves. OK, and some of you have already done this before. So you're the inspiration for these questions. Uh, one thing you can ask these people is, have you learned anything? So in other words, if they're going to a church and that's they're not what, sure. Or, that's what I always ask. Yeah. <laughs> what are you what, learning? What have right? you learned? <laughs> yeah. Right. You can go to church and sit there Sunday after Sunday after Sunday for years. And you ask them, what are you learning? And they say, I don't know what I'm learning. All I know is the message was All good. All I know, it was real good. And I felt the, the, <laughs> the, the, the praise team was amazing. That's right. Yeah. The fog machines were awesome. The coffee is good. <laughs> but you know what? And you ask them, are you learning anything? Are you learning the Bible? Are you learning about God? And they don't know. And it's sad that people can go there for years and never learn anything. You know, the funny thing, you know, <laughs> the funny thing about it is I've, I've met people who they they go to the big churches or whatever and and you know and they come out and I've asked them well, what was the message about yeah and they're like man what did he say <laughs> oh yeah. man I I can't remember what he said let me think about but it let me hold on let me think about it and then you know guys and they're thinking and they're thinking I'm just looking at them and they're like oh man they're like God, what did he preach about? <laughs> and then they're like, I don't remember, but it was good. Yeah. Well, how do you know if it was good if you don't even remember what it was? <laughs> and see, to me, to me, those are people right there that 
they're going just to go because yes. it's just another service. Right, right. But when you really get hungry for God and you go after God, you know, you're, you're, you're going to be so in love with him and so Amen. hungry for him that the word is not going to be stolen from your heart. The yes, enemy is right. not going to be able to take that right. because you're feeling the Holy Spirit and, and the Lord is talking to you. And I think that that's something that we need to we need to remember is that, hey, you know what? Are we learning anything? You know, yeah. hey, are, are we are, are we being taught the word of God? Are we be, are things being uh, spoken to us that are clear to us that we understand? Right. You know, that we we uh we're trying to make people explain. That's why I think, I think like me and Pastor Jamie, our church, I can't speak for all churches, but you know, we always tell y'all, y'all need to read your Bible. You Mm -hmm. need to be reading your Bible. But, but yet if we don't ever equip you, equip you on how to read your Bible or to help you understand what you're reading, then what's the purpose of telling you to read if you don't even understand what you're reading? That's good. And I think that if you're going to tell somebody to do something, you need to equip them. Right. You need to help them. You need to, you need to build them up. And I think that I've met so many people in my life, that go to other churches or or family that goes to other churches and I ask them, well, what are they preaching over there? What are they teaching? You know, and they don't know. They can't answer the questions because they're not being equipped, right? Like they should. Yeah, Amen. I'm I'm glad you said that, Pastor Larry. And it, it's not it's not just we're not saying that when I say what are you learning, I'm not saying just how much Bible knowledge do you have. That's not what we're saying. I think that you should have Bible knowledge. Yeah. But that's not just what we're talking about. Like how many scriptures do you know? Or do you know about this doctrine or that doctrine? That's not what we're saying. A lot of people interpret it that way, but that's not what we're saying. What, like when it, well, for example, whenever I teach like the end times or something and I talk to you guys about Matthew twenty four, the end of the world, the rapture and stuff like that. I'm not teaching you that stuff just so you can get head knowledge and just so you can know it. I'm teaching you that in order to break the chains that are causing you fear and other people fear around the world from hearing stuff like that. You know, I'm telling you that in order to help you change your life because it will change your life if you really grasp that one teaching right there. But there's other teachings in the Bible too. Like, for example, uh, baptism or something else. Baptism, like there's a doctrine of baptism in the Bible. There is a right way, and I believe a wrong way to baptize. I think that some churches are not teaching baptism the way the Bible says to baptize, but it's not really that big of a deal. I mean, it kind of is, but yeah. it's important for you to know that. You know, it's, and I think that you should learn that not just for head knowledge, but just so we can do things biblically, right? Because we want to do things the way Jesus said and the way the apostles did. It's, it's not just about being smart, you know, in the Word as well. Okay. So, again, that's one question that you need to ask yourself or that you can tell somebody else to ask themselves when they're choosing a church is, have you, what are you learning there? Are you really learning there or are you just getting pumped up? <laughs> and then number two is, are my actions changing? Are there, is there fruit changing? So if you're going to a church and it, now th- this isn't always like the church's fault. You know, I believe that sometimes people, when they go to church, there could be a real anointing there. You know, sometimes there is. There could be a real anointing. There can be edification going forth. But if the person just isn't receiving it, then it's not going to change them. You know, right, right. But that's just something you need to think about. You know, are are is is that church that you're going to, or the church that you want to go to, is are people really leaving? And there's a change in their deeds, a change in their actions. In other words, you know, they used to, they used to. I don't know. They used to cuss like a sailor or something like that, but now they don't anymore. Okay. That's a good sign of a good church. If you ask me, because it's teaching you that, Hey, there are some things that you might not want to do out there because it's not going to make you a good light. And then God doesn't want you to do it. Right. So action again, I always say this and maybe you guys get tired of hearing it, but actions are important. And I like the way Mary said it right here. She says, it's going to bear fruit in your life. That's, that's that's the point right there, Mary. That's exactly what I'm saying. That if you go to a church, is your fruit changing? Is it producing fruit in your life? And then, uh, number three, the next question is, has your mindset changed? Is it causing a change in your mind and the way you think? And what do you mean by that? I mean that like, there are some people that go to church and they still leave negative or they always have a negative mindset about things or they're always, you know, just thinking bad or they're always anxious and in, in fear and things like that. Or, you know, they see a certain thing a certain way, like they might see their spouse in a negative light or they might see their job in a negative light and they're always negative and or there's always fear there and all that stuff is in your mind, right? So is it, and it's, it's sad, but, but there are Christians that are doing that every Sunday, Pastor Larry, they're going to church, right? But 
they're leaving and they still have the same mindset that they had before when they came in. And it's like I always tell you guys, sure. when you go to church, you should be leaving differently every time you come in. Now, again, it's not always the church's fault if you leave with a negative mindset. It's just something to think about, okay? Because I believe that like a successful, you know, a good church, you know, that's teaching you good things will speak into your mind and will teach you the importance of having a different mindset when you leave that church and why it's so important. Because the Bible does say, Pastor Larry, to renew your mind daily, you know, to change your mind, to be, be change, be different by the transforming of your mind, you know? And then, uh, oh, am I, did, did you want to say anything, Pastor? No, Larry? Go going? Okay. I just got one more. Anyways, this is the last question right here. Uh, ask that person or ask yourself, are you seeking God outside of church? Are you seeking God outside of church? In other words, hey, you're going to a church. It's popular. It's great. You love it. There's good word going forth. You feel the anointing. But when you leave, does all that stop? Is all that stopping in your life on Monday? No more prayer. No more seeking God. No more reading your word. No more learning. No more edification, which should still be going on throughout the entire week, okay? Because there are people who go to these churches, man. But then it's great, you know, but it's really just a Sunday thing, okay? But a good church is going to teach you to have a relationship with God even outside the church. As a matter of fact, right. your relationship with God and your strength in the Lord should be a million times more stronger outside of church than it is in church because that's the time when you need it. It's easy to have faith and to be strong in the Lord when you're surrounded by believers, when you're surrounded by good music, coffee and, and donuts and fog machines. But when you're outside, can you still have that faith? Are you mm -hmm. still seeking God the way you should on the outside? So look at look at the fruit of those people as well and say, hey, you know, this person was telling me last week that, you know, they're, they don't, they they go to a church, but they're not really sure if that should be their home church. Okay, well, I'm going to look at their life. I'm going to see how they live on the outside of the church. Are they still seeking God outside of the church? Are they still reading, you know, or, or whatever, you know, out, outside of the church? If they're not, well, maybe they do need to find another church. Maybe yeah. they do, you know, a church that will instill that into them. It's just a possibility. I'm not saying that that's true, but it's a possibility that they might need to do that, right? So those are the four things you can look for. You can look for, are you learning anything? Are the actions changing? Uh, is the mindset changing? And is that person seeking God outside of church? Or you, this all, this can all apply to you, you as well, if you're watching this later on. Because like I said, I know probably most people that are watching already call New Covenant Church their home church. But mm -hmm. um, somebody that might be watching later might need to know that. Amen. So uh, I was going to read one more scripture, but um, actually, you know what? I'll do it real quick, real quick. I'll just read it. It's a really small one, okay? And then we'll be done. Acts, Acts chapter 9, verse 31. Let me flip there. I'll just read it to you guys, and then we'll be done. Amen? Acts chapter 9, verse 31. I love what it says right here. Look at the title. The Church Prospers. It says... Then the churches throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria, they had they had peace and were edified. Mm -hmm. And walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, they were multiplied. That's the way our churches should be today. Amen. They should have peace, be edified, walking in the fear of the Lord, be comforted in the Holy Spirit, and they should be multiplying. Amen. So I just wanted to give you that. That's that to me. That's a picture of what a healthy church looks like. So, anyways, that's all I had for you guys tonight. Did you want to say anything, Pastor Larry, before we end it and go into prayer or anything like no, that? No, I'm good. All right, Amen. So I, I'm very glad that you guys tuned in, and uh, I know that we had some prayer requests. So um, I'm gonna try to remember what they were. I know one was for Emma, and uh, for Audra. I think it was Archie, right? Yeah. Yeah. And one was uh, for Raymond uh, Escobar. I think it said. Raymond Escobar? Yeah, I think it was Raymond Escobar. Okay. Escobar. See, I didn't see that one. Yes, it was for Mary Escobar putting on there. Okay. Yes. Okay. Oh, Romero Escobar. Okay. Sorry. Romero Escobar. Okay. Yes, Romero Escobar. Okay. Well, amen, guys. So um, we're going to pray for those needs tonight before we leave, and I'll let you guys go. Uh, again, thank you all for watching. And, yes. uh, you know, uh, be with us again uh, this Sunday in person this time. Amen. This Sunday at 10. 
But uh, let's go ahead and pray. We'll bring these needs before the Lord, and I'll let you guys go, okay? Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for everyone that tuned in tonight, Father. And I pray, Lord, that they would be edified after watching this message, Lord, that they would feel built up in you, Lord. I pray, Father, that the rest of this week they go, Lord, believing that they are strong in the Lord, that they have everything they need inside you, Lord, that they're, they can they can be confident and they can hold their heads back high, Lord. They can hold their shoulders back, Lord, and just be strong in you, Father. So I just want to instill that strength in them, that peace in them tonight, Father, in Jesus' name. And Lord, we just, we lift up Romero for you right now, God. Touch him and, you know, that situation, whatever it is, Father, you know, you know the need, Lord. I pray, Lord, that your your hand would just be in that situation. Father, I'm just lifting him up to you, God. I'm lifting him up, up to you. And uh, just asking you to fulfill that need, you know, he, apparently there's a need there, Lord. So just we lift him up, hover over that need right now in Jesus' name and meet that need, Father. Be with him, Lord, in Jesus' name. And Lord, we pray for Archie's family, God, who uh, I believe he passed away, Lord. You know, I pray, Lord, that you just bring comfort to that family right now. It sounds like he was a friend to a lot of people, Lord. So just bring comfort to his friends and family, you know, right now, God. And uh, uh, just bring peace in that situation, Lord. You know, maybe this can be a time where they turn to you, Lord, even more, Father, and look to you even more so all things can work out, you know, for the good. So, Lord, we just lift that family up to you as well, Lord Jesus. Father, just do a, a great thing within that family, Lord. And, and for Emma as well, Lord, you know, we continue to pray for Emma's health, Lord, yes. up there in the Teague area, Lord. We just pray, Father, that you would touch her and Charlie, Lord, and Violet, Lord. You know, be with them, Lord Jesus, and uh, touch their bodies, God. You know, I, there needs to be a healing there, Father. So we pray and speak, yes. Lord, that your hand would go forth and just touch their bodies, Lord, and heal them completely in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Jesus we lift them up name. to you. We love them, God. So continue to do the work in that area. We've been praying for them, God. So just continue to do that work, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. And for everybody watching tonight, Lord, if there was any kind of need, unspoken need, Father, you know, just uh, comfort the people that were watching tonight, Lord. You know, you you knew the need before they even had it, Father. So, you know, just bring comfort and peace to the people watching tonight. As we go through the rest of the week, they're going to feel blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus and the church Jesus said, amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Once again, I love you guys so much. Uh, again, thank you all for watching. If you haven't yes. yet, you know, please uh, share the message and uh, just you know, you wouldn't hurt to send some more likes and some more hearts real quick. Mm -hmm. But uh, again, we will be back and uh, we will be back in church uh, this Sunday at 10 a.m. So join us. Amen. Yes. Join us and be a part of that. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys face to face. Amen. So have a blessed rest of the week and we'll see you all Sunday. Amen. Amen. Love you guys.